Welcome back to RT America. Well, if you're an American who eats food and would like to know what's in your food, you won big this month. First, Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley has an, uh, introduced a new bill to the U.S. Senate which would require companies to label genetically modified or GMO ingredients in their food products. In introducing the bill, Merkley said, quote, a critical mass of consumers want to know, and we say that's their right to know, and we'll put it on the package. But his efforts may be unnecessary, as many companies are already being compelled to begin labeling GMOs thanks to a state law in Vermont. Food giants Conagra, Kellogg's, General Mills, and Mars all announced they will begin labeling their food products which contain GMOs nationwide. They joined Campbell's Soup, which announced it would begin labeling back in January. The companies were essentially forced to make these changes after the Senate defeated what's been dubbed the DARK, or Deny Americans the Right to Know, Act last week. The DARK Act aimed to deny states the right to enact their own laws requiring GMO labeling, a direct attack on laws like the one passed in Vermont. The companies will have to change their labels by the time Vermont's law goes into effect July of this year. Meanwhile, in Canada, the country's federal health agency has approved a new genetically engineered potato that is resistant to browning, once again sparking debate about GMOs north of the border. RT correspondent Alex Mihailovich is following the story for us in Toronto. Alex, what makes this potato different from others and can we expect it to be labeled as a GMO product in Canada? Well, what's interesting about this is that, you know, you have different levels of GMO. I mean, it's been happening for hundreds of years where we cross two beans together. You probably remember doing that in biology. This is kind of the same thing with uh, potatoes. So it's a wild potato crossed with a domestic potato. So you have one that doesn't brown and doesn't bruise as easily, which is big for farmers. It's about 15% uh, less loss per year when they get their crops in. And the browning thing is if you cook, which I love to do, you know, when you're peeling a potato, you leave it out too long, it starts turning brown. Well, this one stays unbrown, I guess would be the word, for a lot longer. So uh, even overnight, that's what they're saying. So for restaurants, for example, it uh, helps them out. They can peel their toma uh, toma tomatoes, potatoes the night before, and then uh, the next day they can use them. So it's, all, it's a good thing in that respect. Now, looking at that, we know that there's different levels of GMOs. For example, just in the States, it just happened uh, today, I believe, with uh, GMOs, the uh, corn, a type of corn by Monsanto has been deregulated. Now, this corn is resistant to Monsanto herbicide. So you can see there's something very different here. This isn't just crossing two strains of corn. This is a, making a, uh, basically an industry out of your own herbicide and your own corn, and you don't know where those seeds are going to spread. In Canada, there's a lot of people here that want to see this change, at least to get labeling in, just like your guys are doing down in the States. An Ipsos Reid poll says that 88% of Canadians would like to see GMO labeling. And I think the bottom line is, let's at least get that, a little bit of disclosure so we know what we're eating. Uh, GMOs can be uh, fish genes in a tomato, or it could just be two potatoes crossed, like we're talking about right now. But people should be able to know what they're eating. As a, someone else who loves to cook, Alex, my question is, how does this potato taste? Uh, but with the statistics you've outlined showing how consumers are overwhelmingly in favor of GMO labeling, why resistance north of the border as well? Oh, like it's, it's, it's a corporate type of thing, and, and, and we know that. I mean, look at the strength of Monsanto in the States. It has the same type of power here. Years ago, there was a story here where Monsanto wheat was blowing from one field into another and killing a farmer's crops and basically growing there. And then Monsanto sued that same farmer, saying that he was using their strain of wheat. So, I mean, there's, there's all these crazy stories. And like I mentioned, fish genes in your tomatoes, I, I don't want to have any part of that. Two potatoes crossed, okay, we're fine with that. So the resistance comes, first of all, from these big corporations and government sympathizers. We know that within the American government as well as the Canadian government, a lot of people are on board with companies like Monsanto and the lobby groups that support them. But don't be surprised if we see a lot of changes here as well as in the States. A lot of the world is resistant to this type of uh, behavior from companies like Monsanto. Monsanto's banned in many nations as well as GMOs. India doesn't want to have a part of it. Russia doesn't have a, want to have a part of it. And we know that the Monsanto lobby as well as other companies are trying to push into countries like Serbia and into Eastern Europe and they're getting a lot of resistance there. And don't forget, Monsanto holds 86% of GMO seeds in this world. So they have a lot to lose if this continues and uh, I sure as heck hope it does.
You know, the more and more we talk, Alex, the more and more I learn the problems you're dealing with in Canada aren't so different from the ones we're dealing with down here, even when it comes to uh, Monsanto, the corporations, and food. RT correspondent Alex Mihailovich reporting from Toronto.